Yes, what's happening? You all okay? Yeah. Brilliant. I'll be honest with you, right? I'm, I'm from Liverpool. Yeah. Oh, some fans of knife crime in there. Uh, I'm from, a, I'm from a notoriously rough part of Liverpool. Uh, you might have heard of it. It's called Liverpool. Liverpool. Nice one, lads. <laughs> It's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm from a I'm from a town called Heighton, right? And to give fucking hell, mum, mum, no, no. Uh, I'm from a town called Heighton. To give you an idea about Heighton, right? The tallest building in Heighton is the job centre. It was the tallest building in Heighton. Uh, it had to close down because they couldn't find the staff. Doesn't really bode well for the old career prospects when you walk in and you're like, "Have you got any jobs?" And they're like, "No, lads, have you?" But I live, in, I, live in, I live in East London now, I live in Dalston. Do you all know Dalston? Yeah. yeah, it's absolutely class, multicultural. Every gender, creed, nationality and sexuality have all come together in Dalston to have one big fight at a kebab shop. <laughs> it's about as close as you can get to social utopia with garlic mayonnaise. <laughs> and I got married recently. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. And do you know what? I love my wife. She's transcendently beautiful. I love her, which is good because you're supposed to. Um, but it, she's different to me. She's posh, right? She grew up with fruit in the house. <laughs> I found out the other day that she's never slept in a caravan. I didn't even know that was a fucking option, to be honest with you. I didn't know that was an option. Because of, because of like a hair upbringing, like there's sometimes you have I tend to find that there's, there's challenges with being married, right? There are challenges with being married because of my wife's upbringing. She would really, really like to settle down in the south of England, but because of my upbringing, I would really, really like to mug her dad. <laughs> so, you know, you've got to compromise. So we're going to live in Wolverhampton and I'm going to get all of her dad's nectar points. That is, that's the plan. That's the plan. But she's, she's from the Cotswolds. You all know the Cotswolds? Yeah, where they fucking manufacture posh people, the Cotswolds. <laughs> Put it this way, everybody in the Cotswolds has got a kitchen island and one very, very good ethnic friend, if you know what I mean. <laughs> These are people who are so generationally wealthy that if they don't own a horse, they at least look like one. <laughs> the closest anybody in my family has ever been to a stable is doing ketamine in a shed. <laughs> fucking... It's good, and yeah, I'm gonna say it, right? I'm gonna say it. If you are the kind of person who goes onto public transport and listens to your phone at full volume, then you're the worst person alive. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck you. It's, I'm saying that you are worse, you are worse than people who make a big deal out of pronouncing it paella. <laughs> You're worse than people who say things like this. Well, do you know the thing about me is I just really speak my mind. <laughs> Why is it the only thing that's on those people's minds has always been an irredeemable dickhead? <laughs> I think you're awful. I think you're absolutely awful and I hate you. And look, like, right. I'm gonna be honest with you, right? This happened to me recently. Uh, people think that London is an unfriendly place. They say London's an unfriendly place. And I don't think London is an unfriendly place. I think London is an only an unfriendly place if you do something really stupid and really dangerous, like make direct eye contact with someone. <laughs> That's it, that is it, right? And I was on the number 55 bus recently because comedy is going very well. And... <laughs> And someone did this, and look, the 55 bus is my favourite bus in London because it goes fucking everywhere. It goes from Walthamstow to central London via Leeds, right? <laughs> and this lad got on the bus, right, and he started watching videos at full volume of people shooting pieces of meat with real guns. <laughs> you know, like a normal person would. How would I describe this lad? Oh, do you know when you just know in the core of your being when somebody owns a lizard? <laughs> yeah, like, oh, I can tell that you sleep in a bunk bed. That, that, that kind of lad, you know him. If you don't know him, you've definitely read his YouTube comments, right? And like, he was watching it and everyone was getting angry. And there was a woman sat across from him, right? So there was a woman sat across from him and I can see she was getting really annoyed. And she was wearing a Weatherspoons uniform. So you already know she's had a fucking day of it, right? <laughs> And I used to work in Weatherspoons when I was 18 years old, right? And when I walked into Weatherspoons, I didn't know how to pull a pint. When I walked out of Weatherspoons, I was medically certified to treat stab wounds. So she's had a fucking day of it, right? And what happened was 
the lad was watching it. She tottered, got his attention. He looks up, stares at her for like 20 seconds, goes back to his phone. The woman, calm as you like, leans over and just slaps the phone out of his fucking hand, right? Yeah, you best had clapper because she was terrifying. Because she was Batman, right? And the, the, all I could think was, all I could think about this, this entire situation was, do you know what his main mistake was? Shouldn't have made eye contact, should he? Shouldn't have made eye contact. <laughs> <laughs>